Right, but we want to start in uh, South Florida. And I wonder who out there had the Miami Heat going on a long, long win streak right now, like nine consecutive wins. How have they broken through, Mike Fratello? When you look at this team, they've gone through personnel changes, they've gone through injury, and somehow Spo has these guys on track, and they're making a little bit of a move in the East. Interesting uh, that Spo, Eric Spolster, would say <laughs> the road trip that they just came back from, that six-game road trip where they went one and five on the road trip, he felt was a very important bonding time for that team. They lost a lot of close games, significant minutes where they played even or better than good opponents on that road trip, came back with only one win, yet the coach saw something. You saw that silver lining. They came back as a team. He said they never once gave up on the hope of being in the playoff race. Now, couple that with the fact that a guy like James Johnson has really stepped up and played huge for them. This guy is doing a little bit of everything. I never saw him exhibit all the skills that he has. Putting on the floor, taking people off the dribble, getting down the low post area, playing out of the post-up game, knocking down three-point shots, distributing the basketball, and being a team leader. Couple that with the fact that Waiters is back, Tyler Johnson is back, Willie Reed, a pickup, playing really well, you know, behind their, their center. And then you get, you know, think about this. Richardson will be back, hopefully. Winslow, unfortunately, probably done for the rest of the year. But they got some pieces back. The timing was right. And they are playing great basketball. And James Johnson is a tough guy. He's an MMA guy, too. So he's yeah. like a real-life enforcer. Just ask the Atlanta Hawks. They had their little <laughs> tussle this week. Sam, give me your take on Miami. Well, I mean, like Coach said, when you look at these guys, James Johnson, all Willis Reed and all these guys, if they was on the old Miami Heat team with LeBron, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade, they'd be role players. They would be pigeonholed into a spot. But the great thing about the NBA, you get moved around and all of a sudden, the Miami Heat are down. They're trying to play young guys. The young guys get injured. And now these guys get a chance to play. And now they get to play free. They get to expand their game. And so Coach is sitting there looking at James and saying, I didn't realize you could do this. Because in Toronto, you weren't allowed to do this because we only needed you to do <laughs> one specific thing. But now you go to Miami, Dion Waiters, James Jones. Now these guys can just play free, and now their natural talent can come out, and now they got an opportunity to expand their game, and you're seeing it right now with the freedom. All players were good players when they were in college with scores. When you come to the NBA, you have to find a niche, a role. But going to a bad team like Miami with all the injuries and rebuilding, it gave these guys an opportunity to expand their game, and now you're looking at the results. These guys playing free. Oh, they're making the most of it for sure. Yeah. Vince, let me tell you how good Eric Spolster is as the head coach. I think this is his ninth year now with Miami. Think about this. Lose Bosch, lose LeBron, lose Dwayne Wade. Oh, my goodness. Where do you go from there? Well, you put a backcourt together now of Dragic and Waiters, and Dragic has just been dynamic. Waiters comes back. He's been sensational. They find these guys. Magruder. Where's, who's Magruder? Where'd Magruder come from? <laughs> All of a sudden, he's making shots. He, he's scoring 12, 14 points a night. These guys that they've picked up along the way have made major contributions to this team. And we're going to take a look at their schedule that will lead to All-Star break as we watch Deion Waiters be Deion Waiters. At least 17 points in a game for him the last seven games, so another one of those guys playing with great confidence. But check it out. You got the 76ers, Timberwolves, Bucks, Nets, Sixers again, Magic, and then the Rockets, who they beat on this win streak. So this is really uh, setting up pretty decently, although it's always a dangerous game when you look at the schedule. But you know what? If you're the Miami Heat, they're like, hey, let's go. Who wants to play? It's, an, it's a lot of enthusiasm. Well, they're playing well now, Vince. I mean, if you look at the schedule, look, you can't take anybody for granted in the NBA on a night-in, night-out basis, especially when you factor in the travel, the schedule, back-to-backs, and all those things. So... Give Miami credit. Give Coach Spolster credit. He's got these guys playing together. And like Coach said, anytime you take a group and you learn a lot about your basketball team when you struggle, you learn out. You learn who has the mental toughness, who has the heart, who's going to compete every night, who's going to quit. And once you find those things out and you narrow that group down and put them out on the floor, you're going to be happy with what you got because now you're going to have some tough, hardened guys that want to compete. Plus, you got a guy in the middle that can erase a lot of mistakes, too. Hassan Whiteside, 18 and 18, uh, recently against the uh, Atlanta Hawks, playing well. So their core three guys are, have really carried the day along with the role. Play. You know, maybe even more important than getting 18 rebounds or, you know, 20 points along the way is what he said a couple games ago that 
he kind of backed off from trying to have big numbers one particular night because he saw his teammates had it going. He wanted to keep them involved. He felt his role that night was just get defensive rebounds, block some shots, protect the basket, and he saw these other guys were on a roll. Wow, you're talking about maturing all of a sudden where you see the whole game, you're understanding what's going on, and then he can't bounce right back two games later with, I think, 20 and 18. Mm -hmm. That's what they needed that night. Let's talk about Deion Waiters real quick. We saw some of the video there. Is, uh, has he found a home? Has he found himself, Sam? With the Miami. Well, I think he's found a niche. I wouldn't say find a home with the trade deadline coming up because there's a lot of teams looking for a guy <laughs> like Deion Wade who's going to come off the bench with instant offense. And coach, we all knew this, this young man could score the basketball, but he's never really been in a place where he had the freedom. He's always been playing with multiple superstars, and that's tough when you're a scorer. Deion Wade, look, he's not going to make first team all NBA defense. It's never going to happen, but this young man can put the ball in the basket. He's not a shooter. He is a scorer. That means a certain nights he's going to do it from, with jump shots. Other nights he's going to do it inside the paint, get to the free throw line. But he now has an opportunity to play. And, again, I don't know if he's found a home because Miami can take what Deion Waiters has done, and this is good coaching and a good organization. You can take a guy like Deion Waiters, and now that he's playing so well and people can see how good he is, you can potentially move this guy and get younger and get some more draft picks. I don't know if you want to use, move him, you know, if you're Miami right now. The way he's playing, I think he has an option at the end of this year. It could be an option for him to opt out. So that would be another reason why he's really zeroed in, focused in right now, knowing he has to have a great season because <laughs> market time comes. If you got a tradable summer. contract and you're putting up numbers like this, I agree. Miami want to keep, might want to keep these guys to add with these young guys and be their bench. Or they can package these guys together or they can trade them off because James Johnson and Deion Waiters, they can help some of these teams get ready for the playoffs. Look, they, they made a big commitment to Tyler Johnson. So Richardson comes back. Think about this. You'd have Drogic. Waiters, mm -hmm. right, Tyler Johnson, Richardson. Those are four guys that aren't that old exactly. and not bad. No, no, no. If you keep a core there together, maybe you can lure that free agent to come back down to South Florida, which is always a great place to live, and be on this team and maybe, you know, pack and put the rings on the table again. Not that they're close to doing that, but at least he's a guy who has the recipe for that. So it, it depends. But it's I like the way Waiters If I was a player... Right and I look at what Deion Waiters has done, James Jones, and all those guys that went down to Miami, Reed and all those guys, and I look at how their game has transformed, being in that environment with Coach Sposa and then Pat Riley. If you're a guy with talent that's kind of been on the fringe, that's a great spot for you because they're going to provide discipline, they're going to give you direction, and then you're going to have an opportunity to play. Discipline, direction, and structure. We've that's talked it. about that, Sam. With, uh, Vince, Riley. two weeks ago, the entire South Beach area, okay, we're talking about – Pack it in, dump the games, get a high draft pick. <laughs> let's start over again. And now they've won nine straight and they're yeah. right back in the playoff race. It's like, yeah, <laughs> playoff time. Here we come. Could be 10.